mapping and having maps available is something you just generally expect to be there and generally expect to be good. And when it comes to the open mapping data sets, the biggest by far is open street maps, but it pales in comparison to what Google does with Google Maps. And the Linux foundation of all places is trying to address this problem. They are forming a new foundation called the Overture Maps Foundation. But while they are the founder, they are not the only founding member. They're also being joined. Some of these might seem weird to you. Amazon Web Services, Meta, Microsoft, and TomTom. Three of these you've likely heard of, and after the data is available, they will be accepting new members. AWS seems to be joining for things like Alexa, Meta has Facebook, and Facebook has a lot of things involving event locations and business locations. Microsoft, you may forget this exists, but Bing is a thing, and Bing Maps also exist. And then TomTom, TomTom is a really interesting company. Prior to the smartphone, they were absolutely massive. They were one of the big companies selling those standalone GPS systems. Nowadays, those are completely useless. So TomTom Tom exists now basically to sell mapping data to other services. For a long time, the US data for Apple Maps was provided by TomTom, Tom, and a lot of the data for Bing Maps is also by TomTom Tom as well along with selling their data to a lot of these smaller services out there as well. They do still have their own products, but when was the last time you actually saw someone buy one of these? I think I saw one like a couple of years back, but I don't see it consistently. But the important thing is they actually have the experience in doing this mapping and getting this data into a format that is actually usable. Microsoft, Amazon and Meta, on the other hand, they don't really have that, but they do have a vested interest in having mapping that is not controlled by Google and having it actually being good. So Overture's mission is to enable current and next generation map products by creating reliable, easy to use, and interoperable open map data. This interoperable map is the basis for extensibility, enabling companies to contribute their own data. Members will combine resources to build map data that is complete, accurate, and refreshed as the physical world changes. Map data will be open and extensible by all under an open data license. This will drive innovation by enabling a network of communities that create services on top of Overture data. Now, most of the rest of the announcement is just marketing-y fluff, but it skips over something really, really important. What's wrong with open street maps? Why do they have a whole separate thing? Why not working directly with that? Well, the FAQ answers exactly this question and many of the other important ones. The first being that Overture and OpenStreetMaps are not competing with each other. Overture is a data-centric map project, not a community of individual map editors. Therefore, Overture is intended to be complementary to OpenStreetMaps. We combine OpenStreetMaps with other sources to produce new open map datasets. Overture data will be available for use by the OpenStreetMap community under compatible open data licenses. Overture members are encouraged to contribute to OSM directly. Data contributed to ODBL licensed datasets will be contributed under both the ODBL and CDLA Permissive V2. Contributions to CDLA Permissive V2 datasets will be contributed under the CDLA Permissive V2. And then any of the code they end up writing is going to be MIT licensed code. So the main focus of the foundation is to coordinate these companies on specific problems, rather than just having them working randomly, and in many cases may even be repeating the exact same work. Because you may not know this, but all of these companies listed are actually massive contributors to the open mapping space. If we go to Map Libre, we'll see some of their top contributors. $300,000 from AWS. 
$80,000 from Facebook open source, $10,000 from TomTom. And if we go over to this paper here, we'll see some of the biggest contributors to OpenStreetMaps when this eventually loads from the 90s. Okay, Amazon, Microsoft, Facebook, all on this list. Now, I can totally understand why you may not be a big fan of the companies involved. I'm not the biggest fan of Amazon, Meta, or Microsoft. However, they all have a vested interest in getting away from Google. They all have a vested interest in making this mapping data good, and if it actually does get licensed in a way that OpenStreetMaps can use it, this is a good thing for everyone. They have a lot of money and can make OpenStreetMaps at some point legitimately good. So the aim of the project is to one, deliver collaborative mapping. Overture aims to incorporate data from multiple sources, including Overture members, civic organizations, and open data sources. Two, a global entity reference system. Overture will simplify interoperability with a system that links entities from different data sets to the same real world entities. This would basically be like linking up businesses and things like this in a consistent open way. Three, quality assurance processes. Overture data will undergo validation to detect map errors, breakage and vandalism to help ensure that map data can be used in production systems, which is almost certainly why these members are involved, especially Microsoft with Bing Maps. And four, structured data schema. Overture will define and drive adoption of a common structured and documented data schema to create an easy to use ecosystem of map data. But what all of this means in the real world is still to be seen because right now it's just been announced that this is going to exist. No data is currently created and currently available. Overture expects to release its first data sets in the first half of 2023. Initially, this release will include basic layers including buildings, road, and administrative information to support next generation map products. Overture will steadily improve the coverage resolution, and accuracy of existing data, as well as introduce new layers such as places or 3D building data. And all of that stuff sounds great, but when we think of a modern mapping service like Google Maps, for example, this also includes things like public transport information and live traffic data, and at least right now, that seems to be outside of the scope of what Overture is actually doing. But one step at a time. Mapping the entire world is a very difficult process, especially when, you know, roads change. So you've got to update things and make sure it all keeps in line. But you don't know when roads change because you don't know everything that's happening all around the world. So this is still going to just be a little piece in making open mapping better. And maybe it'll get to a point someday where it's actually really good. But we'll have to wait and see. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you heavily use OpenStreetMaps? Do you contribute to it? Do you have no idea what it even is? I would love to know. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. I've got a... Actually, wait, no. Before we do that, and I'm not focused. What is, what is this camera doing? Focus on me? It's not going to focus on me. You know what? We're just going to do this out of focus. Um... If you like this video, go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of uh, these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, and the pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T. I've got a gaming channel called Brody on Games. Am I still not in focus? I'm still not in focus. Sure. Um, uh, wait, this button. I'm out.